Oh, good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Third time lucky. Oh, <laughs> if you just tuned in about 10 minutes ago and everything went catastrophically wrong, we had a major malfunction when we switched on the extractor. But not to worry, we're back here again. If you're rejoining us on the feed, thank you so much and a thousand apologies for the delays. Um, right, OK, believe it or not, we are actually going to do some painting today because I've already started, actually. Hurrah! Anyway, <laughs> let's just run some titles and then I'll explain what's going on. Boom! Okay, we're back. We really hope things work again this time. Oh, these things are sent to try us. Never mind. We're back here. Jack is back. Jack is back in the house. Yes, Jack. And Devanda, right on. Yeah, got scared for a second. You got scared. Think what we were going through. Sorry about that, everybody. Right. Monique, thank you. Yes, we're good to go again. <laughs> and you're right. It is a Tuesday, not a Wednesday. Don't worry. Tomorrow's stream is still happening. But today, this is an, uh, just one we decided just to do, just for the hell of it. We're going to paint on some canvas. Canvas, yes. The, 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 should we paint? Let's do it. Right, okay. If you're new here, what have you got to do if you're new here? Of course, you wouldn't know that already. You've got to ask questions. As many as you want. It's all good. Ah, Diana Carter came back, and so did Deb. Thank you very much. Right, where did we get to, everybody? Where did we get to when I was so horribly interrupted? Right, we got some paint on our canvas, didn't we? Right, okay. <laughs> oh... If you are tuning back in, I'm sorry, everybody. This is what happens sometimes. Right, okay. So I'm going to crack on. Okay, and I'm just going to get some dollops of paint here and there. Okay, and I'll explain what's going on very, very shortly. But what am I doing? What am I doing? We're going to create a real gorgeous... Yep, I've got you. Ages is asking if I can still hear him. Yes, I can. Uh, we're going to do some really, really cool things this afternoon. We're going to create with these beautiful colours... And this is actually a client commission, as I was explaining before, everything went completely south of the border. And um, they're quite specific on what they want, but also quite sort of, you know, loose in their ideas, which is great because we're going to have some fun with colour this afternoon. And I'm really excited about that. So this first, this first kind of wave, you know, I actually stick the tin on, why not, uh, is all about getting some colour onto the canvas. And I'll explain what we're doing as we go along. So I'm going to work my way kind of through everything here. Now, um that's it i've got some suarez blue here we love suarez blue don't we i'm going to come up to the camera where ad is and i'm going to show you because this is gorgeous we're going to do some shout outs as we continue with the broadcast but hopefully you can see that sort of shining and shimmering maybe i'll come up to the corner cam where you can see that okay look mm, delicioso so we're going to have some fun with that that's going on next i'll tell you a little trade secret um, with enamel paints, if you want to thicken them up, you just leave them out for a couple of days because the air starts to pre-cure them. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So here we go. I'm going to go a little dollop there. It also means that when we start to thin this down, it should start to maintain its shape. A little dollop there. Okay, happy days. That'll do just for now. Now, I have got uh, the, can, the lid off the big can. So we are going to go in with that at some point in time. So this now at the moment is about colour distribution, and I want to get... I want to get a, a reasonably even distribution of colour going around here. Let me go in front of the camera for a second. Okay, there we go. Oh, good. We've got all the lime out. That's nice. That's going to form some nice puddles. That's another tin gun. That's another 40 quid. <laughs> okay. Right. So, now we're on the overhead. Excellent. Let's get this. This is a nice hybrid purpley colour. It's got hints of maroon, little hints of chocolate. It's towards the pink end of the spectrum. Beautiful colour, that. I want that to really start flowing, so I'm going to go in there. I'm going to add a little bit of depth now. Start with the darker colours. And the darker colours are going to help me kind of outline things a little bit. So just trying to sort of distribute those in a reasonable way. That'll do for that. We don't really want any more than that at the moment. We're going to go in with gold and copper very shortly. But I want those to be the accents, so we're not going to go too mad on those. Right, who's up for a little bit of orange? Um... <laughs> 
Right, uh, Diana. The Rita, hello again. Will Rosenberg. Woohoo! Paint on the canvas. Thank you, Will. Good afternoon. Will, great to see you. Uh, Devanda says, uh, so I'm assuming the paints behave differently once they've had a moment to set. Um, yes, they do, actually. Um, oh, let me just check with AD. I've got a buffering on my screen. Is it all gone again? No, you're still running? Okay, I'm just buffering on my, my end then. Okay. Excellent connection. Okay, fine. That's just my laptop being an idiot. Okay, fine. Uh, EJ. AJ Lynn Rose. Yay, we're back. And Paula says we're back. Matthew Picklesheimer. Hello, Ed and AD. Uh, hope you're well. We are all well. Thank you very much. Although we have had a slight technical glitch, but we're not going to let that worry us. <laughs> Orange says Devanda Studios. Come on then. Orange, my favourite colour. Right then, buddy. Uh, pick a camera. Any camera you like. Let's do over. So we're going to go orange here. And I'm going to sort of between these two uh, these two greens. One is called water blue, which I think is the sort of aqua end. We've got this, which is a really sort of middle ground lime green. No hints of yellow in it. No hints of blue. It's a middle kind of middle colour. So orange is, is definitely something we want to feature uh, fairly heavily in this. So I'm going to put some smaller um, blobs of paint around the place. I'm just got to be careful now with my distribution because I, I know where this is going to go when I start messing with it. And I know what needs to go with it as well. So that's fine so far. Uh, right, okay. So that's orange dealt with. We're going in with the pink, everybody. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, uh, Mahira Khan. Are you using canvas cloth? Well, first of all, hello, Mahira. Very nice to see you here. And secondly, yes, I am using canvas. Uh, I can tell you uh, that this is, uh, if you want the technical specs, it's 420 GSM which I believe is 15 ounce and uh, it's a medium density weave uh, cotton canvas uh, with a, a special produced gesso put over it at the factory. That, that makes sense. Please feel free to ask as many questions as you want. We will do our best to answer them for you. And Zach Llewellyn has joined us. Hello, Zach. Thank you for, uh, thank you for being here. I'm glad to see that the live streams are, uh, are proving to be uh, a benefit to you. So always good to see you here. Right, so next colour we're getting going now. Um, oh, he, he, he's back, he's back. Okay, just thought your microphone had messed up for a minute then. He was making funny noises at me. Ah, okay, right. So we are going to get some purple on there. Let's go for a drop there. This is a beautiful metallic purple. So purple. I've got to be, <laughs> be fairly... Purple. Fairly easy on where I put it. Um, I'm going to drop there as well. Um, and then I think I'm tempted to have a drop here. Yes, yeah, so we need to bring some something into this corner. I don't mind about these trails going everywhere because they'll sort themselves out. That could be quite interesting. Let's drizzle those around. I don't like to waste anything. So that's the metallic purple dealt with. Okay, great. Fantastic. Now, we also need to introduce some more of the red i'm going to drop these into some small areas just here and there let's get let's get one there not too much and i think i'm going to drop one there as well and let's at least get a couple of small ones over here so let's get one on the top and we'll get one over here and i think i'll get one over in the corner that's going to be a nice sort of sunny sunny warm rich rich corner there that's good and then uh, just looking at the blues, again, I don't want to go too heavy. However, we also don't want to get the darkness of the Suarez blue messed up with anything else. So I think we'll drop in a couple of these lighter blues. Uh, this is a British standard colour if you want to know the technicals. Um, although we do use Pantone colours and there's a really deep blue that I like called uh, French blue, which is pretty cool. Uh, but today we're using a, uh, a stock BS colour. Okay, so far so good. I might just pop on, if I can find it, uh, a slightly brighter yellow. I think I am. And I've got one green left as well. And there's a reason that I want to use green. And I don't often use green in the paintings. Um, just, I don't know, really. Just one of those things. Just a personal thing. However, um, the client I'm painting this for does have green featuring in their home. So I know what the space looks like that it's going into so i want to make sure i'm sympathetic enough with 
with their home decor so that uh, things still do work together. So let's get one in there as well. This is just a brighter, sunnier yellow. Um, and this is at the whiter end of the spectrum, so we've got less of the sunshiny orange going into it. And just as a little bit of a contrast. Okay, so far so good. Right, so there we go on the all-camera shot, my favourite one. If I jump around, look, you can see, <laughs> hopefully, yeah, you can see the delay on the, on the one camera, but hey, we, we can't do much about that. Uh, right, okay then, so... And now I want to get this one more colour, well, a couple more colours I want to get on uh, before we start the uh, the other bits and pieces. So I'm just going to get a small soup sign of this, which is um, a slightly darker green than the line that I've already put on. And I'm just going to feature this in one or two places. Now we do have, I say, a theme of green in the client's place. So I just want to make sure we've got a feature of this in where we need it okay that's great so we've got three colors left everybody um right i can hear your request there matthew about wanting small silver blobs and everything well we'll we, we might be getting some silver on but not at the moment but i will bear that in mind obviously because i'm working to a brief here matthew so <laughs> i'm sure you appreciate i have to stick to that Oh, that's interesting, Paula. Yeah, so Paula has a, a slight colour blindness when it comes to the green end of the spectrum. Yes, which I can imagine does alter your perspective of, of how you view that in your painting. So, yeah, that's very interesting, actually. I wonder whether, you know, I've got it. I've never been tested for anything like that. No idea. I mean, I can only say what the colours look like. I don't think I have. But, um, yeah, all we, I'm always curious to run into artists that have some kind of colour adjustment or, uh, I wouldn't like to say impairment, but where, you know, you view things in a different way um you know to perhaps a, a test might tell you otherwise i think that's quite interesting that you're still able to uh you know to use that as and when you can um, yeah good one okay right so time to get some copper on so we're going to drop some copper highlights here and there it isn't going to move very much this because it's a different uh chemical mix to all of the others so it tends not to do an awful lot it kind of just stays where it is so we're just going to do a few blobs here and there. And then I've got to be careful next because we're going to get the black on next. And the black is kind of going to weave in between. I understand what you were saying there, Matthew, uh, about uh, using the silver. But actually, we're going to replace the silver with the equivalent in black. And I've just got to be careful that I don't put too much of this on because um, it has... Uh, this is going to sound stupid. It has completely different properties to white. <laughs> no, really, Ed, like one's black and one's white. In actual fact, you did say Rome camp, didn't you? Yeah. Um, the, the weight of black is less than the equivalent in white because of the pigments that are used. So, in, interestingly, let's come crouch down a bit. Yeah, so interestingly, this, this, which will have a certain weight to it, if I put the same amount of white in a container, the white weighs probably about 15% more. Uh, but, of course, then... I have to figure out when it goes on the canvas. If I want to put white to sit on top of black, I can't because the white's going to fall through it, if you see what I mean. So I have to be very careful on when white is applied, depending on what it is I'm trying to do with the painting, if that makes sense. But right now, white's going to go on afterwards. Um, I say afterwards, it's going to go on last in certain areas. And then after I've done what I'm going to do, it's then going to go as a wash over the top. So this layering and application, it, it's bearing in mind how the different paints weigh, it's quite a thing. You know, you have to you have to be really quite cute on it, is what I'm saying. Okay, so we want one there. So I I, pre I presume then Matthew, you you saying it's looking fruity as opposed to frutty. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe it is looking frutty in your world. Okay, so that's our word for the day, is it? Frutty. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, I can do, mate. Yeah. I'm just going to pull one of the wires out of the cameras to give it a reset. But what I just want to do... Yeah. Don't worry. It, it is going to go blank for a second, folks. But don't worry. We're not going anywhere. I promise you. That's not, that's not the plan. But let me just get these, these little soup sons of black on because I want them to do something particular, which means I need to get them on in a certain location and area. And that's all I need to do. Because I want them to do something um, as and when the time allows. 
Okay, that's fine so far. Now, I need to do something just before I pull that, mate. I just need to give it a spray. I just need to keep the the colours liquid. See, what happens is um, they start to react with the oxygen in the air and they start the curing process. is isn't normally a problem, but it does become a problem if you don't start moving them fairly quickly. So I'll do it. That's what I'll do it now. Uh, so, <laughs> that's fine, buddy. Yeah. Uh, John, oh, John Zapata. As far as you're the best, thanks for all your creative energy. Oh, John, I'll pay you later. Thanks very much. <laughs> Devanda. So, what does silver and gold look like if you thoroughly mix the two together? Silver and gold together? It looks like metallic brown. <laughs> that's what it looks like, uh, uh, Devanda. So, right, I'm just going to pull the overhead camera. Right, that is now out. Yeah. And we are now back in, buddy. Can you tell me how that goes? Right, I'm going to change the gloves. Right, the screen will just go dark for a second. Do not panic. Okay, we've activated it. So, hopefully, we should have just reset the overhead camera. Excellent. Right, fantastico. Okay, right, so how are we looking so far? Not bad. We've got a lot of colours. We've, we've got the... The, the main bit in the center, which was the blue and the red. Now I've evenly distributed across the canvas. Um, I've got my nice purple, which is at the pink end of the spectrum. Now there is a purple I haven't yet put in. I think, uh, have I? That must be that one then. Have I already put that in? No, I haven't. Right, so oh, I nearly fell on it then. Right, so we're just going to get a little drop. A few, a few little smidgens here and there. These are going to go in between. They're like little fillers, if you like. Uh, that would be quite nice in the corner. I think we'll get one here. And then I'm going to go in with some white. And it's going to be a very similar story, but the whites are going to go in between. And I need to do two things with the white. The first one is that I'm going to get some unthinned paint on it now. And then a little bit later, when we've done our magic, I'm going to get some thinned paint onto it. Um, now, remember what I just said about the weight of the paint being thicker in white? There go. The white is going to sink. Well, by putting this on now, I'm creating this as part of all the same layer, if that makes sense. Uh, but when I do it when it's thinned, it should sit on the surface a little better. That kind of makes sense to you. Um, I hope it does. I'm not sure it makes sense to me, but I know what I'm trying to say. Um, right, uh, who said that, buddy? So, Jack, thank you. That's a very really interesting question. If you're using acrylics, what can you use to de the on delay the onset of drying? I have absolutely no idea. I'm sorry, Jack, because uh, I, don't, I don't use acrylics. <laughs> I really don't like them at all. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, water will dry them out quicker. Um, I don't know, there must be an extender. I think Liquitex, you're not affiliated with Liquitex, um, do an extender. Uh, which has probably got a latex polymer in it, I'm just assuming now, which would attach to the water part of the molecules and just pre prevent them from evaporating. That's what I would say. Ah, there you go. Paul, Paul has come to my rescue. Thank you, Paul. Use a retarder. Yeah, so a similar kind of thing. We, we've, got, we've got an extender. Um, yeah, thanks, mate. Um, <laughs> I'm not telling you what he just said. Uh, we have uh, some which is actually a chemical, which is uh, does the same kind of job with this. Uh, and that's called an extender. Well, we call it an extender anyway. It's not got an official title. And it just prolongs the useful life of the paints to offset the curing process, that's all. Okay, so I'm getting some early white in there. And I don't want too much white, again, because all I'm doing is trying to go with the brief that the clients are given us, which is fine, which is, you know, how it should be, because this is part of their commission. So that's important that we, you know, we're respecting. There's no point trying to deliver a painting out to somebody when you're sending images when it isn't what they want. Now, if I've got too much white, at this rate, I, because the white sinks, <laughs> this is all trying to tie in together, hopefully you're remembering all this, um, then I can add more colour over the top of it. So this is the point at which that, you know, if I've got too much white, it's not the end of the world. But adding it afterwards is going to be quite difficult, if that kind of makes sense. So as with everything, there is always... <laughs> There is always method in there somewhere. There has to be some thought process, otherwise, you know, otherwise people will die. It's as simple as that. Right, okay. Right, so that pretty much is our colour distributed. 
Right, let's get the gloves changed. I wonder if you can guess what's coming next. <laughs> let's see if you can. All right, what are we saying over in the comments then? Um, uh, thank you, Matthew. That's a very kind uh, phrase indeed. Um, Paula, Jack Mel says thanks. Paula says makes sense. Monique, makes perfect sense. Will says use water with acrylic. I thought that would just dry it out, Will. Um, Matthew, you're going to be beautiful. Windsor Newton, Liquitex, both have retarded to slow dry times. Thank you, Devanda. Well, 29 of us watching now. What a lovely community we've got going on this afternoon. 13 thumbs up. So don't forget, guys, if you are enjoying this, please do give us a thumbs up. It's dead easy to do on your mobile device. Just scroll down the screen a little bit and you'll see the thumb. That would be awesome. If you're lucky enough to watch us on a massive widescreen TV, hit one of your forward or backward buttons and just underneath the red bar, you'll see a thumbs up. It would be great if you could click on that and any other device you happen to be watching it on. If you're enjoying or sort of working for your pleasure and benefit, then please do give us a thumbs up because it tells the YouTube bots that you're engaged with what we're doing and it, you never know more people might drop in and help us build the channel and that would be amazing thank you also if you are new here uh thank you obviously for joining us and for asking questions we love to hear from you especially on chat remember to give us a subscribe because that way things like the pop-up live streams like you're watching right now means you never ever miss those because you'll get an instant notification about it and let's be honest who wouldn't want to miss something like this and we've only just started Callie. Have you got your notification on? Yeah, it's Tuesday. You're right. I hope you have, Callie, because you've just joined us. So there you go. Callie must be subscribed and got a notification on because she's just been told that we're live. How cool is that? Remember also, guys, we've got our patrons as well. We've got a few of them watching this afternoon. Thank you guys for helping and supporting us. Our Patreon page is amazing. We're going to show you a quick screenshot of that now on the screen. But you can help and support us in lots of different ways. But here's the really cool thing. As you can see now, we are giving away original Suarez art. I kid you not, run and tell your friends, you could be the proud owner of a Suarez original. And you'll get a picture of those tiles at the top of the page with the logo on it. We painted those just before Christmas on our 100th live stream. And we're very proud to say we're giving those away to our patrons. It's amazing. It'll never be done again. And when they're gone, they're gone. So you by all means go click the link in the description and go take a look at the patron page. Awesome. Thank you very much, everybody. Right. Should we get back to the painting? Because this is the bit where it all changes. Let's go. Right. We are going in. There you are. There you are, everybody. We're talking about acrylic paints. This is my equivalent of acrylic of, of, of water. <laughs> this, my good friends, is solvent based thinners. Oh, yes. And this does some pretty amazing things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So are we ready? Because I'm going to get some of this on. And I'm going to get it on here right now. And you watch what's going to happen. Should we do it? Should we do this, buddy? Shall we do it? Do it! Just do it! Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Nothing is impossible! No! What are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Do it! Yes, you can! Okay. I think it has to be done then. I think we're 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 colours. 17 colours. We must be crazy. Right. Oh. Oh, there we go. AD is human after all. <laughs> he pressed the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> so we have 17 colors <laughs> say <what? laughs> right okay here we go here we go we're getting the thinners on now so i'm gonna get gonna get down i'm gonna get mean and dirty with these this is where everything changes now this is my secret weapon only works with these paints it's awesome it's incredible i want to attack just the main areas of color here because then i'm going to start going around the edges with uh <clears throat> with the sprayer and get it a little bit more localized I might even break out some of the other chemicals and see how far we can get around here now underneath this for the ego eyed amongst you you can see there's another piece of canvas underneath one thing I haven't talked about yet is the table that this is sat on while I fill up another 
another pint of thinners. Excuse me, barman. Batch of thinners, please. I've got a painting to finish. This table. No, God! No, God, please, no! No! Uh, this is a rather uh, unique and special bit of equipment because we have a general lean in the building. What do I mean by that? Well, the building actually slopes off in that direction by about two degrees, which means when you're using a liquid like this, uh, the paint tends to want to do the same. Because, of course, it's a liquid, so it will always try and find a level. And if it isn't level, it'll disappear off to wherever it isn't level. Basic physics. And, of course, in this occasion, it's no different. So the only way we can pretty much guarantee a level surface to paint on is to create our own. And that's what these tables are. We've used the tables before in other live streams and all for general just painting anyway. And uh, what we've done now for the first time in five years is to break out the biggest one that we've got. And this, which only, well, pretty much goes beyond the realms of what you can see on the overhead camera now, is three and a half meters long. Uh, by 170 centimetres wide. And it is the largest one that we've had made, at a considerable cost, but it has 10 adjustable legs on it. And it does allow us then to get a uniquely level surface. I say uniquely level, it's the first time we've used it in five years. And as you're watching it now live with us, it's the first time I've used it as well. So if it isn't level, it's all going to disappear off in that direction and it's game over. <laughs> now I'm going to be watching this paint like a hawk so that I can make sure everything is as it should be and it's doing what I want it to do. And if it isn't, we're in trouble. Okay, right. So I'm going to revisit now, making sure that's better, that we're getting all these areas covered. So I'm going to give that a minute. That's going to start moving and a shaking. Okay, now I'm going to go around the edges and I'm going to do a bit of spraying. Let's get me here, get the action going. Right, so now I can see where it hasn't gone so now i can start on this white around here and then as this starts to dissolve as it actually is thinned there we go that's not thin and looking at these corners and being a bit more accurate with my spraying then <clears throat> uh, i can start maneuver some of this paint where i need it to go which is what i will do so i'm going to break out some of the tools in a minute so we're not over yet but as you can see now is it even starting to move right in front of your eyes that we are going to start and see some amazing shapes and forms coming out and this is one of the techniques at my disposal as to how to do it so just to make sure everything has got some thinners on it because i need the paint now to start reacting quite quite violently and then i'm going to break out my tools very very shortly i'm going to start manipulating this by hand uh, that's really where the painting is won or lost in my eyes okay that's good so far so everything's pretty much sprayed we're starting to expand the paint outwards and that's really really important uh, gloves are still looking good. <laughs> you, yeah. Uh, just hands. Uh, 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 uh. Right, so now I'm going to choose my tool of choice, which always is, in this instance. I absolutely love them. At horrendous cost. They're not. They're very cheap. They are my plastic, I might add, biodegradable grout spreaders. All right, I'll come that way. So that's what I'm going to use next. A couple of these and then gently start to tease this around and then start to, to fill in some of the gaps and start to maneuver and mix colors around. Now, as part of the spec um, that the client has asked for, they've start, They've also asked for, <laughs> as he stopped it, are you rotter? Um, is to start and maneuver some colors into other colors and bring in some very, very minute details. These delicate blends, fronds, a few splashes here and there. So I've got a little bit of working time now, which is great, just while this kind of sorts itself out. So far, the level's actually looking really good. I've got no major runoff. You know, I'm um, I'm looking at this to make sure it's not disappearing one way or then the other, or uh, that kind of thing. The level looking good, buddy. Yeah, thank you. You're uh, welcome. <laughs> uh, can we also say, a, guys, can we also say a big happy birthday? It's Aidy's birthday today. Bless him, he's 26th. And, uh, no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh it, it genuinely is his birthday today and uh I gave him the option i said what do you want to do said, no we come on we're going to go live stream today so um let's all wish him a happy birthday he, he is working um today and um i think it's great and he's amazing and we can't do this without him and he is an ab the absolute backbone to what's go goes on here so i'm sure he would appreciate 
if you want to wish wish the man a happy birthday too, as do I, but so happy birthday. You, you, you can give him, actually, I'll tell you how you can wish him a happy birthday. Give him a thumbs up, all right? How about that? There you go, that'll make his day, all right? Brilliant. Okay. <clears throat> um, 26, he looks 40. How very dare you, Jack? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Jack, I'll take that. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jack. The mind of artists are amazing. I appreciate that. Uh, Jeffrey would be stoked to be the client and watching the progress of this being done. Uh, Devander likes my jazz hands. Uh, lots of happy birthdays to AD. That's very nice. Thank you, everybody. That's very kind of you. Uh, right. Okay. I'm going to start and go in with me with my tools now, my tools of choice. Things are starting to move, which is good. Now, here's what I've got to watch. I've got to watch that the paint is moving this way as well as moving that way. Now, we've got a few runoffs down here, which is okay so far. I'm looking at the bottom edge, and there isn't too much running around, so I'm pretty pleased with that. So whilst I'm now going to move around and redistribute some of this paint, what I've got to be really careful of is the fact that, I, that things don't start to run in places that they shouldn't. So I think what we'll do, buddy, is we'll start, yeah, where you are on PTZ. So I'm going to start in this corner, and I'm going to run along the bottom, all right? Is that all right? So we can stick on PTZ if you like. Yep, okay, right. So I'm going to start over in this corner here, all right, and then just see where we're at. Um, let's see, let's see, there we go. Let's see what shapes we can make. Let's bring the black through there. What this also does, it allows me to sort of, oh, I almost don't know if I want to say this feel the paint is, is that something i can say I, I can feel the textures and how dense the paint is i can feel how much is in any one place uh, now of course i can see where there's a covering but what this also this technique also allows me to do is to assess where the paint lies in its biggest quantities and if i need to move it somewhere to achieve a certain effect i can feel that underneath the grout spreader all right so it, it, it's it's quite this is where it gets quite responsive and tactile but it's only me who can sort of feel that, if that makes sense. Okay, right. So <clears throat> let's let's see let's see what we can do. No, I am going that way, mate. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. I am, I am going this way. Yeah. Ages like, w well, you said you were going that way. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, I am going that way. I promise. Okay. So so far so good. Um, no, I can't see anything. At the moment, I'm just keeping my eye on that blue there because it's coming this way. Um, it's so far so good. Yep. Okay, so. As I've said before, if I go quiet, the, I'm sure you'll be quite pleased about that. This is because I'm just need that little bit of concentration now in my own head to try and figure this out without messing things up. And, you know, this, this is potentially, if the client likes it, the client's going to have on their wall. And of course, there's money involved, and then looking at it and loving it for a lifetime, which is the most important thing. So I have to, I have to be absolutely sure that what I'm doing is is right for them and hitting the brief. So I may go a little bit quiet now where I'm concentrating. So forward apologies for that. Please do continue to ask any questions. <laughs> Has AD given me a round of applause for shutting up for five minutes? <laughs> The poor man, what he has to put up with, eh? Me going on all the time, eh? Ah, so we've got a new friend from Poland. Uh, who was that, buddy? Say me again. Veggie man. Or Vega Man, is that Veggie Man? Vega Man from Poland. Hello. 1984. It's very nice to see you here. Thank you. A very warm welcome to you, my friend. Thank you for joining us. Uh, nice that you, you found us a week ago. Well, I hope we're not disappointing by bringing you another awesome live stream. Don't forget, we're doing it again tomorrow. We hope to see you there as well. But it's great to have you on chat. And genuinely, thank you very much. I hope you're subscribed and enjoying the content we have. Uh, please let us know if you've got comments. Um, always good to hear from you. If you've got ideas or suggestions or feedback, we're always very, very happy uh, to hear from anybody who's watching us over here on the channel. Uh, and if you have watched this video or enjoying this one, or seen any, you've only got another 251 to go. <laughs> yeah, 
because we hit a bit of a milestone last week when we uploaded our 250th video. Can you believe that? It seems like five minutes, doesn't it? Goodness me, we're all on this journey together, aren't we, folks? Love it. Okay. So. Okay, we're redistributing now some of the colours, which is great. Again, might go quiet for a minute. Please don't worry about that. Honestly, just take it while you can. It doesn't happen very often. You see what I mean? The, the white just gets utterly swallowed up, pretty much. Right, okay, but we're looking good, so we're in good shape. We're in good shape. This metallic purple, really nice, that. We're into the water blue here. Let's let's bring a few little swirls from some of the other colours in here. Same on the yellow. Got to do too much mixing here. We're just gently working our way around, teasing paint out to where it needs to go, out to the sides. I'm still very conscious that I need to give big, keep big blocks of colour. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Okay, but uh, so far so good. This, this is nice and different to uh, the other variation I've done uh, for the client. Uh, which is the whole point, really. I want to give them two bites at the cherry, two, two different angles of, uh, to uh, uh, approach the same brief, if you like. Which is part of the, uh, how we decided to, do, uh, to structure the commission process uh, for the paintings. Ah, thank you, Matthew. I've become one with the art form. Excellent. Well, that's that's nice to hear. <laughs> yes, Paulie, all right. Uh, keeping a dialogue and creating the painting and having AD in my ear takes insane skills. It does. But then AD pressing the buttons and forward thinking and reacting to what I'm doing also takes a similar mindset in terms of insane skills. So I like to think that's one of the reasons why, you know, hopefully we, we continue to push and be successful at what we do. Uh, because we both bring the same mindset, even though we bring different skill sets. If that, well, I'm sure you know what I mean by that, because you've been there a million times, Paula, I know, from the chats that we've had. Um, but thank you for that. That's just, it's, it's kind that you can, that you recognise that. You know, and it's very much a two-pronged approach with us, you know. Uh, we very much... Uh, Sandy, AD says thank you. <laughs> And thank you to everybody. Just it said in my ears, yes. So thank you very much for all the kind wishes. Uh, it does, trust me, it does make all the difference. Whether you think it does or not, I can tell you right now, just by you being here and saying hello, it makes all the difference. Because it means we don't have to face the world on our own. And ever since we've done these live streams, we've created the most amazing community around us. And it's very, very heartwarming to know that you enjoy what we're doing, you support us, and that you've, um, well, pretty much got a vested interest in uh, in what we're doing. So thank you for that. Uh, yeah, so the reason, thank you very much. That's a great question. Uh, does cream have a similar weight to white? It does, uh, but it doesn't weigh as much. Although there isn't, there isn't much between them because they're essentially made from the same pigment. Um, but as you can appreciate, there is a difference in them, but it is on the slide. But black being, being, Pretty much at the opposite end of the spectrum uh, is considerably lighter. Uh, you wouldn't really think it, would you? But over a five litre can, I don't know if that's a gallon, yeah, like a gallon can if you're in the US, it does make quite a difference. It's about half a kilo difference, I think. So we're doing some nice orange blends here. We're taking the orange back through a few colours here and there. Some gorgeous tones starting to appear now. Got to be very careful, especially where the thinners is very loose and making the paint very thin, that I don't over mix. Um, you can probably see what's going on here, the way these incredible tones are going through the Piaggio Verdi, which is scooter green, and this gorgeous series of purples here, which is looking amazing. Now, what I've got to be very, very careful of... Um, oh, it's overhead frozen again, is it? Oh, it's back! Hooray! <laughs> yeah, excellent. Nice. Okay, so getting very particular here about what goes on on this kind of level because there's some amazing things happening however i think i need to take some of this white some of the i've got a big pool of white there i'm going to bring through these lines here uh, a pool of white i'm going to bring through and see if i can get out into this area where it's just on a bit on the light side all right so let's see if i can achieve that let's um let's clean off the edge here you tell me when you're ready dude 
I'm just waiting for the camera to focus itself. Brilliant. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, uh, I'm going to take this and I'm going to try and weave it through and into the orange, all right? So you can see here's a little bit of paint to be able to use. This is why it's so important getting the white on early doors. All right, so let's just see. Let's just pick that up, take that through. Nice, that'll sort itself out. And then we'll take a little schmizzle through into the purple and that way. Beautiful. That's nice. Some of this is going to flow back into itself, but that's beautiful. I like that. Just kind of, you know, brought the green up. We've got a few wisps of white on the end. Just lightens that up a little bit. And careful here, I don't turn everything pink. And uh, we've got a nice big skadoosh of, of, uh, there we go, of the copper just going on there. Uh, so Sandy asks you, where does grey tend to sit? Well, interestingly, uh, Sandy, another excellent question. Thank you for asking that. I don't tend to order grey. Uh, it's very, very rare unless a client actually wants to match a colour. And that's because they generally come from the mixing of white, white and black anyway. So I tend to get most of my grey tones um, purely as a mixture of layering black and white together, if that makes sense. Um, so actually, I don't. I, it's a great question. I know I don't have an answer for. <laughs> and it's a great one. Yeah. Well, so it's, it could very well be in the middle, couldn't it? I mean, you would imagine, you know, if you take half the white out, then probably, you know, it stands to reason, I guess, from a physics perspective, that I'm sure you're right. I'm sure. I'm absolutely sure you're right. It's probably somewhere between the two. Um, I guess one day we'll find out. So, uh, Vegeman1984, uh, uh, thank you very much. That's very kind. Obviously, uh, <clears throat> just to fill everybody else in, if you're not watching the comments, he's been uh, feasting on some of our content and our videos. Um, but it's heartwarming to think that they are helping and have been entertaining. I mean, that's what we want to do. We want to try and help and educate other artists, as well as entertain uh, people into the joys of doing this and some of the pitfalls, of course, because this is never an easy thing to do, especially when you're working with hazardous materials and on a large scale and broadcasting and all the other things that sort of move in between as well. So uh, we're really, really happy to hear that. Um, Vegeman1984, and thank you. And a welcome aboard to the family. It's great to have you here. And Funny Fox has also joined us. She's a regular. She's here every time we broadcast pretty much. Hello, Funny Fox. Good to see you here this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. And oh, so this is your veg, your ve veggie man. This is your first live, is it? Awesome. Well, well, there's another one tomorrow, so you'll be able to get two fixes in one week. How cool is that? I know, amazing. Even I love it, and I know what I'm doing. <laughs> right. Okay. So we're trying to work through it. I'm going to have a proper global look at this very, very shortly. What do I mean by that? Well, it means I can take an objective look from an overhead perspective, decide where I need to do uh, any changes. The nice thing about working up close at this level is that the paint is all still very very workable which i'm really happy with um added to that of course the added bonuses is if there are any gaps on the canvas anywhere i can fill them in i can manipulate paint on quite an intimate level i don't mean that in a funny way you know what i mean like an up close a very personal kind of getting your face inside it kind of thing which is really nice and we're coming kind of back around to where we started now um, I haven't really done too much in the centre in terms of manoeuvring paint around. Uh, and that's fine because it's kind of looking after itself, really. My main priority is that I don't have any gaps anywhere. What I don't want is any canvas to be showing. Um, now, over here, it's still a little bit, uh, a little bit tough. I'm mean, sorry, tough, thick. Um, so I've just got to be careful now. I just want to do a little bit of manoeuvring. I'm going to have a look at some more of your most excellent questions and comments in just a second. Yeah, good question, uh, Zach. Thank you for asking that. Um, surprised I don't more use more colours like lavender and lilac. Well, yeah, in, from an, that's a, that is a really, really good question. Again, you're asking some great questions today. Um, I mean, yeah, look at this, how much... Yeah, you know, I mean, this pretty much looks like lavender anyway. Here's the good thing about using different colour purples. And the fact is, is that as you introduce white into it, which I knew I was going to anyway, um, I'm kind of diffusing all these colours with the white, and the white mixes... Um, and creates those tones for me. So I don't tend to use or buy, um, you know, the, these more sort of uh, pastel -y or washed out or any of those kinds of colours. I tend to stick um, to a very broad 
sort of primary base of colours, but that is simply because I've got so much flexibility with them. I mean, look, look at this now. I mean, okay, I know it's 17 colours, but as you can see all the inter, you know, the bits that sort of mix with each other, what you actually get is an almost infinite variation of tones, you know, where you get an orange mixing with a yellow and you, well, you would think, excuse me, from doing that, then you just get, you know, an orange and yellow, but then you get all the other tones going in with it as well. And one of the beauties of this technique is that as paint starts to move and as thin as starts to dry out and it takes paint in all kinds of movements and directions, as it mixes and hits each other, you get all these different tonal variations, which is just, I mean, it is incredible. And you just, you do know what you're going to get, but there are always surprises. So, yeah, thank you for asking that, Zach. Uh, it is an excellent question. Um, but, you know, hopefully that answer means that we don't, we just don't have to worry about that because we make it, um, we make all these excellent colours just by adding the white. Okay, I've just seen a bit of drama here, folks. I've got a great big gap in the centre. So I've got to sort that out. Okay, so we're going to get that sorted next. So, and that's that there. Well, it's not a gap, actually. Oh, look at that. That's that's crazy. It's actually white. So we're going to get that white distributed. There we go. And already look how much white I've lost. You know, it's because it's just sank underneath. So I'm just trying to tease little little droplets of it out here and there. Um, no, no hardship. It's fairly easy to do. But this is the kind of monitoring that I have to do to try and achieve the effects that I want, um, you know, across the board. So that's all right. So I think what I'm going to do now, we'll get the gloves changed. So far, so good. Right, let's have a, just change my gloves, have a quick look at the messages. Uh, Art C. Shan, I see summertime in this piece. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Good to see you here. Um... And, uh, oh, that's Delane Chicone. Chicone. Have I said that? All right, I'm not sure. I don't know what VOM ONG means, but I'm sure I'll find out. Somebody somebody might tell me. Uh, Matthew, I know God smiles to see you create such beautiful work with the resources he's given you, Ed and AD. Well, thank you very much, Matthew. Let's hope he does, eh? Uh, a field of flowers. Jeffrey Jenkins makes me want spring now. I know. It makes us want spring every day. <laughs> Did you steal the rainbows, Ed, says Funny Fox. I think I have, and they're all here, aren't they? <laughs> yes, I've stolen the rainbow. Lovely. <laughs> Excuse me a second. Um, so have we caught up with everybody impacting hearts, says Matthew Williams. Very, very kind. That's excellent. Uh, guys, we've got 35 of you watching now, but only 23 thumbs up. So which of you lovely people hasn't, hasn't yet given us a thumbs up? Thumbs. Thumbs. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the th mm -mm -mm. Don't make me don't make me dance. Don't don't say I'll give you a thumbs up if you dance. All right, this is about you loving what we're doing. All right, should we get on with it? Yes, forget the dancing. Thumbs up, guys, will be amazing. Thank you so much. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm watching you to see. Are you? Have you? I got my eyes on. I'm, I'm watching. Always watching. Right. Okay. Let's take a tour around and see what's going on then. Right. Okay. So far, I actually think the table is level because we haven't got anything shooting off in that direction. So I'm getting pretty pleased with that. Now we started off, well, a broadcast and a half ago <laughs> with the red and the blue in the center. So we've diffused that a little bit, which is fine. We've introduced a little bit of, the white's nice. It's just popping up in all these places. I don't really think I need to add any more to this now. Um, what I'm quite cute about now and curious is where we've got all these sort of, you know, ins and outs and these fronds and these very delicate things going on i need to make sure those continue to develop now in some places i've got a lot of thinners on it so i'm reluctant to put any more in but in other places i'm just trying to find out now whether there is actually enough okay so i'm just going to have a little oh hello let's have a wander around so okay so uh jack and uh, was that ptp podcast uh, yes guys well ptp podcast first of all hello and welcome um a new new uh face for the stream thank you so much for watching us today yeah both asking how long this is going to take to dry what an epic question and ultimately this is the million dollar question isn't it how long will it take to dry well on a general rule uh something like this with a lot of paint on it and a lot of thinners we'd be able to move it uh in about 48 hours although we've got to make room for tomorrow's live stream so with a bit of <clears throat> bit of care and attention we hope to be able to just literally move it off the table this time tomorrow 
However, in terms of it being fully cured and ready to be stretched around its frame, a minimum, I think, this of two weeks. It's going to be at least two weeks, if not longer. We have one in the back which is thicker than this, which I painted six weeks ago, and it's not ready to go on its frame. It's still not growing. Uh, so the client could be in for a long wait. <laughs> we'll have to just see how that goes. But in, in, in answer to your question, it depends on the thicknesses of the paint as to how long the drying takes. The thicker the paint, the longer it takes. Very easy reason to explain that. If you imagine you're, you're looking at a flat plane of canvas and you put a bubble of paint on it, the thicker that bubble is, um, the more time it takes for air to get inside and cure the paint. The thinner it is, the easier it is for air to penetrate. These react with oxygen in the air, but as the, if a skin is formed on the surface and a skin is formed underneath where it hits the canvas, air cannot penetrate. So you're then subjected to a natural entropic process of the degrading of the chemicals that keep it liquid. Does that make sense? You just li literally just have to wait for them to evaporate, which can be anything up to about six months in some cases. Right, Aidy's going to pull my microphone and then I'm going to get my fingers in uh, because there's a few bits now I need to treat to a little bit of a uh, little bit of finger magic. Right, and we should be back on now. So, uh, what I'm doing now, this is kind of, kind of the back end of the process. I'm, uh, I'm just going to, with the fingers, just tease. I can feel where the white is, actually. This is another one of the benefits of having white as a, um, as a heavier colour. And it, it's not my design, it's just the way the paint, paint comes out of the factories. Uh, is that I can now dig in where the white is thicker and hidden underneath and tease it back out on the surface. And this is really nice because it allows me to add these small little wisps just here and there. And of course, I'm picking other colours up as well at the same time, which is always really nice. So I'm just going to literally add a few of these curls around the place just to bring in this little drama, this little sort on of intrigue as we go on. I'm going to pull this round, look and circumnavigate all the green here. So let's see if I, let's first of all go out into the maroon. There we go. That's a nice one. We've got another one here. I'm just going to flick that around a little bit. And then how much have I got here? So I've got loads here I can pull through. There we go. So just going to drag that through just a little bit. A lot of this is going to disappear. And as you see now, as things will start <clears throat> to settle themselves down, look, we're already losing some of the definition. But, oh, now who asked the question about grey? Um, can't remember. <laughs> here now, look, where I've dug my finger into the black, where white's been underneath. Suddenly, I think it was it Diana? It might be Diana. Suddenly, I've got lots of grey appearing. Look at that. And I haven't put any grey on it. So this is one of the beauties of not going too mad. I think, uh, was it... <clears throat> Was it Zach who said about, uh, <coughs> excuse me, other buying other colours and making other colours? Well, as you start to mix them around, you don't tend to need to. You can make almost any colour you want, just with the basics. Oh, Sandy, was it? Yeah, okay. So there you go, Sandy. I've, I've just made some grey. Um, looking pretty nice. Hopefully Sandy's still there. Okay. Ah, Jackie Bouvet has joined us. The Queen's Jubilee Garden. Excellent. <laughs> and Albert. Albert's joined us as well. Everybody's dropping in now. Great to see you guys. This is a pop-up live stream, which we just decided to do. Why? Because we can. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a big skadoosh of orange right through there. This is gorgeous. Now, one of the other things the client wanted, if you just joined us, I'm actually painting for a client. This is their actual commission. Um... One of the things that they specified was these big elements of colour, but they also wanted plenty of, of <clears throat> small little veins and lots of interesting things to look at. So this is where the, the best tool of all, isn't it? It's just to get your fingers stuck in. This is where this technique really works so well, because I can be really explicit and control where the stuff goes, especially the white, and how much of it is moved at any one point in time. It's great, and you can feel it underneath the fingers. So, so yes. If you have just joined us, welcome. Uh, we, I say this is a real client's painting. Oh, Matthew, that's a great one. Blossoms of Hope. I think it, I think it may have found its title. What a great name! Thank you, Matthew. Much appreciated. Uh, right, so there we are doing some slightly bigger swirls now, kind of diluting some of these harder edges. 
but without sacrificing or compromising what we're doing with the actual volumes of paint <clears throat> and the areas that they occupy on the canvas. Uh, thank you, Art Artsy Shan. Yeah, saying how uh, you like how carefree my work looks. Well, I think that's it. You've got, you've got to do the things you like. Ultimately, if you <clears throat> if you get feedback or people don't like what you do, or however society or the world wants to judge you, that's up to everybody else. But ultimately, you've got to be driven by the things that excite you. You know, and and you know, me and Ad love this kind of thing. Why shouldn't it be free? Why shouldn't it be uplifting? You don't have to have an art degree to appreciate the work that goes into it. I'm not asking anybody to like it. Uh, but by tuning in, you're so, kind of understanding what goes into one artist's process and the fact that we choose to invest time, energy and money into sharing it with you. And that's all this is, and which is why your feedback and you being here is so gratefully appreciated. Um, and we just thank you for it. It's as simple as that. Um, who, who said that? I love it. I love, I love. Uh, oh, Arnoud. Arnu, is that right? Uh, Arnoud. Yeah. Have you ever tried making something figurative? <laughs> um, yeah, Arnoud, I have. You don't want to see it. I mean, I tried to do, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever, ever told anyone, I tried to do a horse once. Um, I had an inquiry in the very early days, could you do a picture of my horse with my arms around it? So I tried that. And let's just say I don't think the client was that impressed. So um, we couldn't tell which one was the horse and which one was the client. So I think I... <clears throat> I'm much better sticking to this kind of thing. But thank you for asking the question. Yeah. So so if I was to surmise my uh, technical prowess at figurative art, it sucks. All right. Right. Let's move on. <laughs> we can't be good at everything, no matter how hard we try. OK, so let's let's look at where we're at so have i got my color distribution pretty good well i'm very happy with the white the white is the bit that is defining some of these areas that's nice if i'm looking on the right side so are you on overhead are you dude yeah so looking at the right side you can see where my hand is so we're looking now at the purple going into the green and these beautiful sort of um, warm tones at the sort of aqua end of the spectrum they're really nice they're being offset by those there Lots of drama and intrigue going to the corner with just these elements of black using them together. A lovely fusion and blooming of black on the orange there next to the purple. Um, then if we come over to the centre, uh, what we've got in the centre now, as you can see that, so we've still maintained the red and the blue, which is one of the things the client wanted to see, which is really important, so we've maintained that. What else have we done? We've introduced other dramatic in elements into that as well. We've gone around the outside with other colours too. We've fused in even more bright colours over this side of the painting as well and we've gone in with that gorgeous almost looks like a stingray in the corner in the yellow it's surrounded by that gorgeous black and then we've gone we've got these splashes of green going on the white is looking fantastic i'm even loving what we've done with all the purples and the violets and the cerisi kind of lavender color going on at the bottom here it's a very restful part of the painting as that fuses itself into all the rest so i think barring one or two things folks we're not doing too bad here well let me know what you think in the comments i'm loving it I'm pretty, pretty certain the client's going to go utterly nuts over it because it's hitting their brief, but it's looking utterly spectacular. Um, uh, so, Dewey, yes, I think I know what you mean. You, you, you mean uh, gold at the end of the rainbow? Is that what you mean? Yeah. You need gold in the corner for the end of the rainbow. Is It's a good one, isn't it? Have we got any gold in the corner? Uh, we might have, actually. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Dewey, just for you. See this here, look. There we go. Gold at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> that bit is entirely down to you. <laughs> awesome. There you go. There you go. Just for you, that was. <laughs> uh, your wish is my command, do it. Okay, great. So I'm just literally just tying a few loose ends up here. I'm making a double check that we haven't lost uh any of the shapes that are wanted which is nice and we've finally got the broadcast stable sorry about that if you joined us on the first one which lasted all of about 10 minutes um but so far so good again i'm checking for levels now here at this rate uh, i can see what's going on and i don't think we've got much movement at all because so i'm just communicating that to ad right who would like to have a look on roam cam who wants to get up close and have a look 
Right. Uh, <clears throat> Matthew, man, that's so beautiful. Thank you, Matthew. Artsy Shan, the blues are very indeed soft but livid, but livid the same. Thank you very much. I think I know what you mean. Uh, Jeffrey says, lovely. Anticipate cells developing. Bell Geek here. Uh, no, actually, I'm not going to introduce anything that will bring selling into this. I think I'm just going to let the paint form its own organic textures. But it's always tempting, isn't it, uh, Jeffrey? JB Vet, uh, how could you not smile and feel wonderful walking into a room with that on the wall? Well, that is the hope from, uh, from the person who is hopefully going to be buying it at some point. Right. Okay. If Jackie Bouvet wants to see Rome Cam, let's do Rome Cam. Now, my Rome Cam has gone off here, buddy. I haven't, haven't got an orange light. Um, so, you've got a, yeah, but I haven't got a green and orange. So, we're just going to check if Rome Cam is on, because I've got a feeling it isn't. Is he working? Oh, okay. I don't have an orange light. Isn't that odd? Oh, my orange light's come back on. It could be because you have to hit it to activate it. I don't know. Right then, folks. Here we go. You wanted the money shot. Here we go. So, there we are. Look. All right, and then I'm going to give you a nice slow pan over this as it develops because it is literally a cacophony of rainbows appearing right in front of your eyes. Let's go and have a look because wonderful things are happening. Oh, have we lost it, have we? Oh, yeah. Okay, right. So it could be the battery. Sorry, folks. AD will just go on to another camera. Would, would you like us to... Yeah, we think the battery's gone. <laughs> Shall I get another battery in, shall I? Uh, ever the professional. We're going to get another battery. Right, okay. Let's take the lens cover off. You do want to stick around for this, because this is going to look awesome. Um, right, okay. Take that battery out. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's the old one. Lovely. Thank you, buddy. Look at that. Did you see it? Just an arm comes through. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Just get fed a battery with an arm and a hand on the other on the end of it. Brilliant. The man is a legend. Right, okay, so this is my system for sorting it out. Uh, oh yeah, please check the video source. Right, okay. Right, let's get that back on. Right, I'm trying to switch it back on. No, nope, doesn't want to switch back on. Wow. Just pulled the battery. No, nope, no, we're okay. I, th I think it doesn't like me switching it on when it's in the case. So I'm just going to go on to overhead. I have, you'll be pleased to know, got the Rome cam back up and running. So I'm going to give you a proper look at this. It's in the case. I'm just plugging it in. Okay, we're plugged in, dude, and we've got an orange light. We're back. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, let's let's start this then. Let's give you some close-up. What have we got going on here? Let's see. There we go. It is literally, you just don't know where to look for the best. There is so much going on. I think this is just the gift that's just going to keep on giving for a lifetime. It really is. There's some beautiful lavender tones coming into that metallic purple, fused in with that telemagenta. Look how gorgeous that is. Where do I go? Do I go left? Do I go up or down? We're introducing... Look at those amazing... It looks like a dragon. Look. We've got a dragon appearing in the orange there, like a fire-breathing green dragon. Amazing. As we come down to this delicate blue... Just fantastic. There we go. Look, the black's mixing with the white. We've got a few greys going in there just to tone everything down. Happy days. Off we now go into this. What you might think is just a mass of one colour isn't. There's just all kinds of things going on. Isn't that marvellous? And of course, it continues to develop as the time moves. Beautiful. Just with those little flecks of gold going on here and there. And it's looking marvellous. So, Aegis has told me we've got a question. So, <clears throat> asking which um, which brand of paints I work with. Well, in actual fact, they're an enamel paint, but uh, it's not a brand. You know, it is a question I get asked a lot, but it is actually made for us here. Um, so it's not something you can buy off the shelf, sadly. Um, it is an oil-based enamel, so it's got a 
uh, resin that was based in the diesel industry. It's actually a byproduct of making diesel, uh, which is with a very long chemical name. And into that goes hardness uh, and pigment and a couple of other proprietary chemicals that we put in in various quantities. Um, but it is made and mixed especially for us. So sadly, uh, no brand name to be able to give to you today, I'm afraid. But uh, I do hope that does go some way to answer any question. So we're up over the top edge of the painting now. I mean, I don't actually know which is the up or the down. That's the that's the beauty of this. This is what I wanted to look at. There we go. I hope you're getting some of that. These are these incredible blends. And I know there's the ref Let me come down this way so you can see it a bit better. I don't know. You know most of this is going to stay uh, in terms of this shine. It is very shiny, although the thinners will take some of the shine away. Um, the that is built in the glossiness is built into the paint so this this is the finish that we're going to be left with which is amazing of course and we're coming around the far right side depending on how you're looking at this uh, Matthew's obviously liking this it's a 10 on his Richter scale and that's always good to hear Matthew there we go as we take a look across the canvas I mean it's big and it weighs it will weigh a lot when when this is moved um, but this is going to have 24 hours to before we can even think about moving it. Yeah, so in feet, yeah, well, it's 118 inches, I can tell you that. So it's almost 10 feet long. Just under 10 feet long. And the cameras just can't. You've got to be stood in front of this really to appreciate it. The camera just can't do it justice. It simply can't. Um, so I'm just now looking to see where is the paint moving, hoping and praying that uh, it's not going to fall off this edge. You know, we've done our, our, we really worked hard yesterday to uh, to try and keep this level. My one one concern is here, where we've got a falling away of, of black. So I might just lift the table very slightly. I'm going to consult. I'm going to consult with Amy. What do you think here, mate? So we've got a branch kind of appearing here. Well, it's coming towards me, so I need to get this side up just a little bit. Yeah, I think I think here I'll put a couple of shims underneath. And, and just prop that. Oh, it does, yeah, but I can just I lift it just slightly and I'll just pop a couple of the um, things. Yeah, I think so. I don't know what you can see. I mean, the other thing, well, let's just pop you in here, guys. Just hang on a sec. Um, just chatting with AD now because we need to make sure that this doesn't disappear off the edge of the canvas. So. What do you mean here? No, but then this is, is this is here. This is another one I'm worried about, but not... I say we're not too much, that's all right. It's this one. I need to control a little bit. So I'm just going to, yeah, I'll pop, I'll pop her. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. Okay. Yep, that's fine. It should just send it back that way a little bit. Um, okay, that's fine. Maybe, maybe it'll make then. Yeah. Sorry, Diana. I know we've, we've got all the lights on here. Unless we kill the lights, I can't really give you. Should we kill the lights? Yeah. Oh, I'll do it in here. Right. Are we ready, folks? Oh, hang on. No, it'll go complete. Will it go dark? Well, that's quite dark, isn't it? <laughs> Should we see what Rome cam looks like? Oh, dear. It's too dark now, Ed. What are you doing to us? It's too dark. Let, let's have a laugh, shall we? I'll tell you what. I'll come this side. Can you see anything now? Yeah, a bit too, bit, bit too dark, that. Oh, well, we tried. We tried. Right, let's put that back on there. <laughs> let's switch the lights back on again. Oh, oh there we go. We have lights. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Uh, so, Diana says, uh, gosh, you've outdone yourself. Well, that's very kind of you. Callie likes it with a big amazing. Uh, Matthew says, gold medal to you guys. Uh, 10 out of 10 from Monique. Thank you. Paula, well, you just killed me. That's it. I'm done. Stunning, stunning work. Oh, behave yourself, Paula. <laughs> Thank you anyway. Uh, Diana says it's awesome. Uh, well, everyone's really loving this. That's nice. Dude, that's out of sight. Yes, thank you very much. That's really kind, everybody. I Well, how? I think, I think we're going to call it at that, mate. I think. Uh, to be honest, Sadie and I might have to give, give it a little bit of uh, TLC and watch it uh, for a little while. Um, I can see maybe one area I might want to have a little look at, but we'll discuss that off air. Um, failing that, guys, I think that's pretty much a winner-winner chicken dinner all round, that. 
Um, that's looking pretty nice, I must admit. Um, yeah, okay, pretty pleased with that. Right, okay. So, uh, Jeffrey says, atmospheric awesomeness. And Devanda, this has been a blast as always. Have a great one. Got to run. Well, we got to run too. Um, guys, we've really enjoyed that. How did that? How did that happen in the end? It's amazing, isn't it? There you go. One three meter by uh, 130 centimeter painting done in the hour, um, and that was looking pretty amazing. And we can't wait to show you uh, what that looks like at a point in time. Our patrons will get to see it first, of course, like they always do. But at some point, guys, we will show you that. Remember, we're back online tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. That's UK time, GMT. Don't miss it, because we're going to be doing something equally as awesome, if not greater, uh, when we're back online tomorrow. Please do check your notifications. And if you're not already subscribed, please do hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon. That way, you will never have to worry about a thing. We take all that worry away from you. Of course we do. We hope you can join us tomorrow in just over 24 hours' time when we're going to be doing this all over again. Come and have a chat, especially if you're new. Thank you so much for watching. Now it's Aidy's opportunity to go enjoy the rest of his birthday. But from the two of us here this afternoon in Stroud, can we say a very good afternoon to you. Please take care, and we look forward to seeing you soon. But officially, we are now out of here, and a very good afternoon to you all.